and get started with the Message Center. Um, and so what the Message Center is, is it is a, uh, a, it is a tool that allows you to send email alerts to whoever you dictate, basically, within your organization. It's a tool that you basically can configure as many message alerts as you want, and that will um, dictate what social engagement goes out and gathers, and then you can also dictate who it sends it to. So I'm going to use this example of this post alert that we use. Um, and the way that it works is that you give your post alert a name, of course. And as you can see, we're using the most commonly used hashtag for dynamic CRM because at C5 Insight, we care about dynamic CRM. And so you can see it's inactive right now because we're not gathering posts at the moment. But typically, it's active. Um, you can go through from there and um, dictate different criteria, such as if you want to allow duplicates. I'm guessing no. So you click no duplicates. Here is where you say where your email recipients are, who your email recipients are. And you can also, a cool thing you can do is configure Teams in Office 365 and then assign them here. So if you have a larger organization or you have a larger topic that you need more people uh, to cover, you can create Teams and then allow people to cover all of your different bases. And then from here, this is something that's very uh, constant throughout social engagement. The, the way they filter things is pretty pretty consistent across the board with some minor tweaks. So you'll be seeing a lot of this. Um, so of course, we have our keyword filter where you use this a lot to dictate what specific words you want to pick up in different posts. Here, we obviously are using the hashtag MSNCRM. And then you choose your sources. You can choose one. You can choose all. Uh, you can choose several. Uh, it just depends on what social media platforms are most important to you and your brand. And where you found that people are talking about them. And something cool about social engagement is you can figure that out through experimenting with the different sources. Um, another huge thing that we use is looking at sentiment. A lot of times you don't need to know when, when things are going great, when people are loving your product or loving your brand. But you do need to know when they aren't loving it. Uh, so as you can see, that's why we have negative checked off here, and we bring that in. Um, and then there's several other different filters you can choose that are pretty self-explanatory, like location, Reach is something that determines someone's social media influence uh, that Microsoft has come up with, one being the lowest, five being the highest. And um, I'll show you more about that later. Uh, there's also location, location type, authors. And then the last one I'll hit on, um, just for the sake of time, is this link to CRM feature. So you can choose if you want a post, a post author um, to be gathered if they have been linked or if they haven't been linked. So essentially you're saying, OK, if we've had an interaction with this person before, I want them to come in. I want to know that we're consistently tracking with this person, that we're consistently reaching out to this person if they're a really hot prospect. Or if you want all new prospects and you just want to um, be getting the farthest reach possible, you would choose not linked to a CRM record. So you would get everybody and anybody coming in. Um, and so final thing I want to note, or no, second to last thing I want to note about the Message Center is its timing. Uh, the way that Message Center works is it'll send an email to your inbox or whoever you dictate. They'll send an email to their inbox once every six hours. And that can be a finicky subject with people because some people will say that, well, posts are super time sensitive. If you don't reply quickly, you'll lose them. Um, but on the flip side of it, people don't want their inboxes all clogged up with these post alerts. Post alerts. So six hours is the time frame that Microsoft came up with in order to kind of respect the time sensitivity, and also make sure they're you know, not just bombarding people. Um, and it could change, but it, it's, it's hard to speculate. So as of right now, it's six hours. Um, and that, that matters to some people more than others. But um, in order to maybe not blow up people's inboxes, they're keeping it at that time. So lastly, why this is important is this allows marketers to work so much smarter and not harder. You kind of cover your bases by assigning topics to different people and having them cover, maybe you have one group of people that covers customer service complaints, and one group of people covers a certain product, and one group of people is just all about the brand. Um, and that way, you're, you're monitoring everything, and you're allowing things to not slip through the cracks. Um, I have this uh, statistic by Blue Wolf that says 90% of enterprises use social media to respond to customer service inquiries, yet 58% of people who have tweeted about a negative experience never receive a response. Uh, so that's something interesting to note because I think that's something that uh, it just goes to show that people are using social media a lot more these days to either endorse or complain about a brand. And it just is even more of a reason why we need to pay more attention to social media. 
these days. So that's our first um, that's our first listening tool. And so now we're going to hop over to this. I say is probably the most important tool in social engagement because this is what dictates what you see on the home page of analytics over here. And that is so the analytics page is super important for understanding what people are saying on social media. So in order to understand, you have to listen first. Um, and so the way that the search setup works is you have all of these categories over here. And you can dictate um, your own categories by just clicking this plus button. Uh, you can have a bucket for your competitors. You have a bucket for accounts you want to follow, for campaigns you're running, for products you have. And you can throw your search topics into these different buckets. And in analytics, you'll be able to see that you can view them based on their buckets. You can see overall what the social media um, opinion is of a, cer of a certain product every month or what uh, the social media opinion of all your products is every month. Um, and so in order to create a search topic, you have to first pick the category you want it to be in, and then you can click this plus button. And there's different rules that we can choose different types of rules that we can choose. Um, I'm going to talk about the keywords we'll probably the most, but I do want to hit on these other ones just because um, they are still important in one way or another. Um, so the Facebook pages rule and the Twitter rule are both pretty straightforward. You just need either the URL um, or the uh, Twitter handle of the account that you want to follow, and it'll directly link to an account and follow every interaction with that account. Um, and you can do a little bit more tweaking with it, but for the most part, that's how it works, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, the custom sources rule was an answer to people's desire to be able to kind of gather their own sources, to create their own sources. Um, and so that really helps in the blog and the news aspect of social engagement. Uh, there's total coverage for WordPress.com and WordPress.org and Tumblr, um, as far as blogs go. And then for news, social engagement has a news syndicator that covers like over 3,000 different news sources. So they have a wide range that they hit, but obviously that doesn't cover everything. So the custom sources is an answer to that because you can link RSS feeds into social engagement. And then lastly, the private messages rule. Uh, I would say this is the least useful one out of all of them because it's just a way to link the messages that people send to you um, privately on Twitter. Um, I haven't really seen a use for it yet, but some people may have that. So to swing back up to the keywords rule, this is really similar to the message center and how you configure the search. You can see that there's the sources selection again, and then there's your languages, and then your keywords. You can have more than one keyword. Um, it doesn't. There's no limit that I believe um, within reason. And then you also have your inclusions and your exclusions, which your inclusions say that you know whatever word I'm in, I'm putting as an inclusion also has to be in the post in addition to my keyword. And then for exclusion. You're saying that if this post or if this word is in the post that contains my keyword, don't gather it. And this is a great way to kind of tweak your searches because you'll find if you kind of experiment with social engagement, there's a lot of um, variability in how many posts you gather. Like you can put in one search and it'll gather 30,000 posts a month and you can put in another search and it'll only gather like 10. And so you really have to find the balance of how, within how many posts you do have in social engagement and kind of making posts valuable to you because you don't want to be bringing in a bunch of unnecessary um, unnecessary stuff. So this inclusion and exclusion is a great way um, to try and do that. So the timing for this, uh, it's faster than the message center, but it's not as fast as some of the other um, tools that we're going to talk about. So it's about in the middle. It's, it's kind of like a bathtub that when you turn on the faucet, the tub isn't instantly full. You kind of have to wait a while for things to start you know, for water to trickle into the tub and fill it up. Um, and that's really the way that this works. And there's a couple other tools that are similar to that within social engagement. But that's how the search tool works as far as timing. And then lastly with that, um, why it's important. Like I said, this creates everything you see in analytics, which is how you understand what people are talking about, which is the next step in connecting with them. Um, and this is important because you need to dictate good stuff that will give you good results. And that'll give you a good indicator of where, where you're at, what people are saying, who's saying it. Um, so that is the search setup. And so our last um, listening tool that we're going to go into is the social center. And I really like the social center because it gives you um, these streams uh, that show you a snapshot of what people are saying on each in a way. You get to see things on a post-by-post -post basis. 
Um, and that's pretty cool because you can scroll through, you can um, pick a different um, tweets that you're going to respond to or um, posts that you want to gather or fill in the blank. Um, and you really get to kind of um, see organizationally what's going on across your different topics. And uh, the way that you create it is just you would move over here and click the plus button. Oh, if I can find it. Yeah, and you would add a stream. And I can show you what the back of these look like. That you just give them a name, you choose an owner, you have a color, and then you can choose users to share it with. And then just like we've seen in a lot of other tools in social engagement, you have your keywords and your sources and your languages, sentiment, all of that good stuff. It's pretty much the same. Um, and this tool is pretty quick in gathering stuff. When it's up and running, I'll see posts coming in within, you know, 10 minutes of being published. Um, which is really nice because it's a lot more real time. So I think social engagement does a good job of balancing uh, kind of that little bit of a slow approach with the message center for maybe things that aren't super time sensitive. But for people who are concerned about time sensitivity, you have the ability to see in social center um, what's going on, what people are saying, and you can respond accordingly. Um, and something important to note about this social center is that we understand if you're replying to people who are complaining about your products or who are unhappy about something, you're not necessarily going to be reaching the CMOs of a company. Um, but Jay Baer, who's a prominent digital marketing strategist, says, sell something, get a customer for a day. Help someone and get a customer for life. And that's really what we're going for because if you're improving your social media presence and your social media reputation, that might not tangibly give you um, business that you can quantify, but you're gaining a reputation and you're, you're showing yourself to be the experts in your field or in your industry. And that's what um, kind of connecting with people through social engagement and through paying attention and listening um, will do. Um, so that's a great reason why Social Center is important. It's super useful for that quick listening on a post-by-post -post basis. 